This is Algebra 2, Chapter 12, Section 6, in which we will study circular and periodic functions. Okay. Those sound like really difficult ideas, but they're fairly simple. First off, we need to talk about a unit circle. All a unit circle is is a circle, obviously, that has its center at the origin at 0, 0, and it has a radius of one unit, whatever we're measuring in, one foot, one inch, whatever. Okay. This is a unit circle. Now remember earlier we talked about angles being in standard position. And we drew an angle in standard position with one side pointing out the x-axis and the other side wherever it was. So if it was this size angle, it would be there. You know, if it was like a 120 degree angle, it would be somewhere in there. If it was a 200 degree angle, it would be somewhere in there. I remember how we talked about that before. Okay. If our angle is in standard position, then where it intersects the circle here, that point, those coordinates, tell you the values of cosine and sine of that angle. Okay. That's all this the unit circle is really about, is being able to identify cosine and sine of whatever angle we're working with. And we can do that based on the coordinates we get. Okay. For example, if our terminal side of our angle intersects the circle at negative three-fifths, four-fifths, okay, I'm going to jump back over here. Oops. Let me stay there. There we go. Negative three-fifths, four-fifths. That'll be somewhere over in here. Okay. The point where it crosses there. That's what they're talking about. Those coordinates are negative three-fifths, four-fifths. Okay. They want us to find sine and cosine. Well, on the previous page, we had a rule that said x is equal to cosine and y is equal to sine. They said find sine. Sine is the y value. Find cosine. Cosine is the x value. When they give you the coordinates, that's all they're looking for is can you tell which one is sine and which one is cosine. The other part to what we're going to look at here are periodic functions. When you have periodic functions, the y values repeat at regular intervals. Okay, they repeat over time in an easy, predictable way. Um, Old Faithful shoots, erupts, every ever how many seconds it is and it's regular it's predictable you can tell how when it's going to happen okay same idea with these periodic functions you know what they're going to do because of the way they are one complete pattern where it goes through the whole thing and it starts to repeat again that one complete pattern is called a cycle and the horizontal distance, the spacing of the, of the cycle, is called the period of the function. Okay. And I have a picture here of what we're talking about. This is a periodic function. Okay. You can see it goes up, it gets level, then it comes down, then it gets level, and then it repeats up, level, down, and if I'd continued, level, up, level, down, level. And you can see the repeating pattern here. So all of this part that I'm going to attempt to mark, all of this is a cycle. Everything that I've kind of sort of marked in blue Drawing with a touchpad is not the easiest thing in the world, but all of that is one cycle 
of the of the uh, function. And the period of the function is how far apart, how far the cycle stretches, how far is it until it repeats. Well, it finally repeats itself starting again here. So the period of this particular function is 12. Okay. We're getting you ready for thinking about working with sine and cosine because they are periodic functions, as are the other trig ones. But we're getting you ready to thinking about working with sine and cosine primarily. Okay. The pictures that you're going to have today are going to be more like what you see here. And they're going to ask you to find the length of a cycle or find the period or something to that effect. Fairly simple, fairly straightforward. The hardest part, believe it or not, was making the picture there. Now, if you had questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down. Bring them in with you, and we'll see you in class.